Hey everyone, Sean Frangelli here with a new tutorial. I am really excited about this one. Today we're going to go over a bunch of um, different modeling techniques and kind of the basics of how to model in Cinema 4D and we're going to build this bike. And my idea behind this one was you know, I've modeled in a couple other programs and I always like to figure out the quickest way to do things. So I wanted to see how quickly we could put this together using some of these techniques that we're going to go over. So I'm super excited about this one. I just had a Red Bull. We'll see how quickly we can get through this and you can keep track of, you know, how many times I mess up and have to start over. And, you know, maybe this will be how to model a bike in 20 minutes. Maybe it'll be how to do it in two hours if this just does not go to plan. But think about this as, you know, kind of the basics of this sort of model. So we could, you know, go back in later and add all the little details and notches. Um, so we'll build this bike as quickly as we can. Um, engineers will see it and say, hey, that doesn't work. It's not detailed enough. And we're not even going to care. Not even important right now. We, you know, we're just going to knock this thing out as quickly as we can. So this is actually built on, I took a photo of my wife's bike that's in the room here. And I'll put a link to this. I'm going to use this kind of as my reference photo for just blocking out some of the parts. And then eventually I'll just start making stuff up because that's always fun and creative too. So I'm going to make a new Cinema 4D file and to get that into the background, I'm going to go to this view and then go to the right view. In here, I'm going to press Option or Alt V if you're on a PC. And I'm going to click back and then I'm going to click up here and it's going to allow me to import an image. I'm going to click that photo of my wife's cool bike and I'm just going to scale that up quite a bit, maybe to 3000 and then I can also offset it so it's on the axis that I want. I'm going to just move that over a little and I'll just use this to block out the basic shape. So we'll have, you know, the frame, the tires, handlebars, seat, all that fun stuff. And if you're wondering what this is, it's because we live in Chicago and it's always horribly freezing here. So that's for an indoor use. Lock your bike to that and you won't ride into the wall, hopefully. So we'll skip that part because it's not the actual bike, but you know, if you want to keep going, build this crazy thing and you know, our walls and whatever you want to. So, you know, let's get started right away. So I'm going to start my timer on how long I think this is going to take now. All right, here we go. Um, so I'm going to just start blocking out the frame and I actually put a bunch of icons and shortcuts for the stuff I like to use up here. So I encourage you to do that. So I'm just going to get one, ellipse, drag it over. This is going to be the top. I'm just going to kind of block this out and end up making a bunch of changes later anyway, um, but just kind of get my basic frame in place. So move that over and I'm going to copy paste that, move that one down here. And this will get us our just one leg of the frame and I'm going to drop that into a loft nerve. And let's go back to this view up here and see how this is coming. All right, perfect. Got ourselves a little tube. Let's head back in over here and I'll make a couple of changes. Just already going to scale these down a bit and move it back into place. So let's drag this one here and the loft nerve is going to connect these parts and then we could add some caps and stuff to it. Um, and it allows me to, you know, control the angle that these are on and the edges, which is great. So scale those down, move this bottom one down and close enough. Um, so move this one over and then we'll stop screwing around with this one and get to making more of these parts. So I need this bar, this bar, this bar. So I'm going to just hold command to duplicate that and I'm going to delete one of these. I'll just start with this bottom one. And this is just some, you know, copy paste shortcuts rather than starting completely over that I like to use. Um, you know, taking loft nerve, just copying it so I can have another one um, rather than starting over. So I'll make that second part of the bar, drag it out. Cool. That's our second bar. Duplicate that again. I'll keep this front one, drag this down. Duplicate that with holding command and let's just get this bigger bar done. Pull this down here and a little too small. So I'll scale up both of these. Perfect. 
I'm just gonna move this one back into place. And you know, I feel like I'm supposed to be talking the whole video, so there might be lots of exciting times of me saying, I'm gonna move this and shift that. Um, but I want you to you know, have an idea of what I'm doing and not just click around, click, 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 and have no idea what's happening. So that's kind of our basic frame. Hopefully it lines up. Yep, looking good so far. Um, the one thing I want to do with this one is we only have this perspective, but I know that a lot of these bikes, it's more of an oval. So for both of these circles, I'm going to make it an ellipse and pull down the Y radius like that. Good. And then I'll just pull that in. Hopefully I didn't throw off my reference. Oh, I did a bit. So I'm going to just cheat that down. And then this tube I'm going to just pull that down just so it's kind of connecting. And now let's build this wheel. So I'm going to make, start with an ellipse, drag this over, and I'm just going to make the tire first and then the rim and then the spokes and all the little parts because that's probably the wrong way to do it, um, but that's how I want to do it. So I'm going to get a circle. I'm going to make another circle to scale it down. And I'm going to drop both of these into a sweep. There's my tire, I'll just kind of roughly block that into place. And the anchor points always get out of whack. So the one thing I use all the time is this axis center. It's mesh, axis center, axis center. I just made a button for it. So I'm just gonna click that, check all these, execute on the sweep, and good. It usually does a good job. Sometimes it doesn't, you need to move it manually. Uh, and I'm just gonna leave that dialog box up, get my tire blocked out, good. Um, and then for the rim, I'm just going to copy that, scale that down, and then I'm going to delete this circle and put in this end side and drop it down to five. So let's see if that came out how I had in my, oh man, something is not going right. Let's try that again, scale it down, and that time it does work for whatever reason. So that's kind of our blocked out shape. You know, you might be saying, you know, this bike has treads and why doesn't it have this? Well, I'm, I'm modeling a road bike, so ha. Um, so let's add some more details to this wheel. I'm going to just start from the center and then we'll shift things out. There's all these parts and gears and you know what I see? I'm just gonna call that a tube. And so I'll just make one of those rotate that 90 degrees with holding shift, pop into space, scale it down again, and I'm gonna add just caps on the end of it. So we'll add fillet, and that's good for now. So then we gotta add some of these spokes. So I'm just gonna start adding a spoke from the center of this and then line everything up after that. And we scale up this wheel a little bit better. That thing is, is really inflated. Good. And just fix all my center points because that drives me nuts. All right, let's get um, one of those spokes. I'm just going to make a cylinder, drag it over, and I'm going to make one and just line it up where I want it to go. So just scale this up, scale it down to about the size that I want. Scale that up again. And I'm going to end up having to mess with this in a second anyway, but I just kind of want to block out where exactly it's going to go. Now, to get this to rotate around, I'm going to put it in a cloner, MoGraph cloner, or I also made this little button. Drop in that cylinder, and it moves somewhere else for some reason. You can make it radial, and I'll just rotate this back the right way, put it where I want it. And under the cloner details, I'm going to turn kind of say maybe 14, scale that axis, and just line that up just as close as I can. There we go. It's about there. I'm just gonna scale up that end side just so we don't see any of those little corners poking through, because that's how engineering works. You just hide something inside of a cylinder and it works, as far as I know. So I want some big spokes and small spokes, so I'm going to duplicate that cloner again, 
rotate the whole thing a little over. And then with this cylinder, I'm going to actually turn it off for a second and just scale the cylinder down and make it longer. Let's turn this back on. Oh, too long. Now we're popping our tires. And there we go. All right. Good. That's our tire. We'll add some other tubes in there later to cover other stuff up. Um, but that'll work for now. So I need a back tire, of course. And I know you're thinking copy paste this whole thing, right? You've figured it out. But I'm actually going to drop this, all this tire stuff into a null. Center that. And then I'm going to make an instance of it, which I added a button for here. And then if I end up messing up later and needing to fix that, um, it's going to reference this tire. So cool. Got two tires. They don't line up. Maybe I didn't take this photo exactly on point, but close enough. This thing's all flown, so let's add some other details. Let's build out a little handlebar holder, and then we'll build out some of these edges here and see how, see how we get with that one. So for that, I'm just going to copy this loft nerb. Again, just delete the faraway circle, rotate this kind of roughly into place. And the one button I always end up pressing is W to switch my world rotation, as well as L if that axis isn't moving. I can just move that a little on my own. So I got that one. I'm going to duplicate it, move it up, make sure I got my fillet caps, fillet cap. And I think I added everything into itself, but fixed it. There we go. That's looking just fine. So on that one, I'll make sure again, fill it cap, fill it cap, just to smooth that out. And if I've got a top bend, I'm actually going to put an end side instead of the circle. Drag this end side over here and then just move it into place so it's not this crazy weird shape, scale it down, rotate it so you're not making like a, a carnival bike or something. Not that there's anything wrong with those. And move this in to place. And I might need actually another circle just to bend that up. But that way we can kind of have it transitioning from, you know, these circles to more of this shape that looks more like, you know, a bike might look, which is as far as I can explain why I'm going to do that. And sides are cool. So going to move that one back into place. Let's see, you know, may maybe I'll reference that photo again just to, oh boy. All right. We're just, we're, we're making it up now. We're, we're past the point where this has anything to do with this bike. And now we're just going to start making the bike that you know we always wanted. So you just kind of block out at least something that sort of makes sense, add some extra ones, some extra ones, scale it up. And we just need something to be able to lock our handlebars onto. How does that look? Not very good, but how much time do we really want to spend on this? We'll see. And make another one. Uh, but that's why I like working with these loft nerves because you can kind of just add a bunch, move, delete, and kind of keep going along. All right, cool. So we got that. I mean, now I need these little spokes down here, or the bars going into the spokes. So I'm going to, again, just center this, duplicate this whole loft nerve, move this down, and I'll just use this kind of as a point of reference and then replace a bunch of them. But I can start with this here and let's see if this is worth salvaging or if we should just start anew. So I'm going to move my rotation point from here, move this over, maybe scale this whole thing down and just kind of try and lock it in to place. And let's just grab that bottom and then we'll remake these N ones. Right? So scale this whole thing down, move it up, just kind of drop it in there. So we know what we have a reference point. Cool. So I'm going to just build upwards from this one and hopefully it goes 
better than the last time. Let's see, do we need all of these? Don't need that end site. All right. So I'm just going to look at the side side view. Let's grab that whole object and just start pulling some of these circles um, using this roll rotation and just scale those in to place. There we go. Gonna just and basically the same process that we were just doing to build out one end of these. And we'll have another trick to get the other side. And you know, I'm just gonna assume that this is how metal can work and bend because it works here, so it must work in real life. So we're kind of at the top now, and I'll just pop back into this view. Just drag that one in, drag that up, scale it down a bit, grab another one, move it, twist it. That's looking a little more normal as far as this being whatever this shape is. So just move this down, move this down, and you know what, for all intents and purposes, that is close enough for this part. Time to move on. So I have one side of this bar, and now you're probably thinking, all right, we can instance this, but I'm actually going to just grab this loft nerb and drop it into a symmetry object. So let me get that one, drop it in, and then we get the other side. So cool, it looks like it lines up. And then we need the back parts of this bike. Look, at this is a, a funky bike, but I dig it. I'm going to duplicate this whole symmetry object. And just use rotation around that angle right there. Maybe check to make sure it does actually line up a little. You don't want everyone getting mad at you. And then we can just grab a couple of these and move them back into place and probably delete a You know what, that's, that's looking good to me. Let's see if that lines up over here. A little too high. So I'm gonna rotate that down and that's good. That, that's exactly how I decided I wanted it right now. Uh, so I'll just duplicate that again, make these high ones move those circles to drag those and good that is looking fine by me so now next what do we want to do what do we want to do let's just block out all the gears and stuff and you know this is what i was talking about you could get super detailed and you could use these same tricks that we were just talking about but you know i'm just going to make a tube there for now and assume that's how this bike works so just scale that over move it in place scale it up a bit add my caps to it and let's see how that's coming over on this side so you know as i said we're just blocking this out so that is good enough for me for this model. So I'll just take that, copy paste it, make another one, because you know I assume this bike is made of two little tubes like this. Scale it down. Good. Now, you know, let's have some fun. Let's build this seat. So I'm gonna go into my top mode and I'm gonna grab my Bezier spline tool. And again, all of these are just tools that I put up here. So if you need to access them, the splines are in here and things like loft and sweep are all in here and all those commands are here. So these are just my little ones. So I'm going to grab that and just roughly draw out the shape of a seat. I'm just going to make it up a little and we'll get this. I'm going to draw out half of this shape and I don't really have to worry about this end and I'll just close the spline. Let's hop into my top view and move that one down a little. And then I'm going to go to model mode center that and I'm going to duplicate that whole spline rotate it 180 on the top axis slide this over so they're overlapping and then I'm going to 
drop that into a spline mask, grab both of them, put on A or X, Z, and then I have just one shape. So if I press C to make that editable, now I have my rough seat. And I'm just going to position that over here into place kind of above where we had, and it's really big, so I'm going to scale that down, move that over, and then we got to build out this seat, so of course I'm going to then use that same technique and drop that into a loft nerve, center that, um, that point seems always get out of whack, but that's Okay, and again, like I said, if it's ever not working with that center command, you can always press L, manually get it back there. And that's just because I want it to be there for this reason. So press L again, and I'm going to duplicate that mask, that spline, scale it down a little, and just rotate it a little to get that kind of shape. And you can already see where we're going with this. So I'll make another copy, scale it down, move it down, make another copy for the bottom. And look at that, pretty quick, nice little, nice little seat. And now the seat looks kind of tiny, and I don't think this would be comfortable for anyone. So we'll just scale it up a little, scale it a bit this way, and roughly a seat. Um, and I'm noticing some other stuff, and that's kind of the point of this process is we're blocking all of the parts out. Um, and as we're going through it, I'll say I might notice some things as we get this proportions that don't quite match up. So I'm noticing here, um, I probably have too much geometry here. So if I delete a couple of these circles, I'll probably straighten that out. And that's why I did that symmetry object because then I don't need to do it twice. Those look quite a bit better. Um, so we got our seat. We got um, most of our frame. We're almost there. We just got a couple little things left to do. Um, one, someone needs to put their hand somewhere because I don't think anyone could ride this bike and then we're probably going to need at least a rough idea of pedals and a chain because it's still unusable. Real quick, I'm just going to grab this. I'm noticing again this inside shape is a little too big for that tire. So I can just grab this, let's find that one, and just scale that down a little and then scale the whole sweep object up. Good, that looks quite a bit better. So let's quickly build our handlebars because I want this to be a shorter tutorial. So I'm just going to start those again just from this loft, but delete all of the end sides except that one. And now I already have a loft started. On this side, rotate this one end side around after I turn the loft off so I can see it. And I think that's a really tiny one. Okay, that's fine. So I'll rotate that to the side and then I can just start making copies of it to extrude that out. Scale those down a bit. And again, this is kind of the more creative decision making part of it. Of I could replicate those same ones. You know, you could make your own bike handles. I just kind of want to block this thing out roughly, make a bunch of copies to get the bending how I want it to be. Um, and then I'm going to just put this inside of the actual handle that we'll make. So I'll just drag that out. And then I want a handle sitting on top of it. So I'm just going to again copy that whole loft, delete all the other ones, scale this one up, make a copy of that one, just pull it away to extrude it, maybe scale them up a bit. Uh, just keep kind of refining this along the whole way to get whatever look you want, or just try and do it as quick as possible so your video doesn't run over into two hours. Um, like I want to make sure mine doesn't. So copying these, scaling them, whoop, not doing that, just scaling it down, pushing the points in maybe, that looks pretty cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with that for this one. This little inset handle, maybe I'll put some, you know, streamers on there later um, and that'll be nice. Maybe change these fillets. And then when I have both of these, so this is my handle, this is my handle. I'm going to again make a null just for that and maybe I'll name a couple of these things just so I can keep track of them because uh, it's getting pretty big and usually you know I'd not to name all this stuff but you know we're doing this quickly and we could always do that stuff later but usually name your stuff. So drop that into a null 
I'll drop that null into a symmetry object, which I have up here, that one. And then we get our other handle. And I'm just going to slide this out. And I kind of like how they meet here at this point. But this is when we start to see things fitting together. We might need to scale a couple other things. You know, However you want to hide those details is up to you. And wherever you're going to be seeing this model from. So super tiny handlebars we can always fix later scale those up you know fix those make everything kind of look proportional this is one uh, overhead photo would be helpful but no time for that so we're almost there let's just quickly make the pedals and i'm going to use that same technique i did for the seat so i'm going to grab my linear spline tool and do the same thing i just did for the seat of just roughly draw out a big shape of half of what I want for this pedal. Try and get my line straight, close spline, go to object mode, center that just for my own use. Copy paste the spline, rotate it 180, drop that into a spline mass, press C to make it editable. Oop, make sure that this is on the right axis. Press C, center that, and that is our pedal shape. So there's one half of our pedal and the same thing as the last time. I'm just going to copy paste two of those, put it in a loft, and I'm just going to in the loft add fillet caps rather than making it additional copies. And what I want to do with this is there's usually holes cut in these pedals. So let's do something new for that. I'm going to just grab a cube Slide that over here, scale it up, cutting it through this shape, and just make sure that it's intersecting where I want it to be. And this is why we have the few, four views, so I should probably just be using those so I can see what I'm doing, because um, then we could get this wrapped up a bit quicker. So I'm just going to scale this up, move it into place. It's huge, but that's fine. I'm going to add some caps. And then I'm going to make a copy of that, slide it over. I'm going to check real quick in my top view to make sure that these are at least close to centered. And then I'm going to, again, connect these so they're one shape. Press C, center that. And then I'm going to drop my pedal and those shapes into a bool object and make sure they're in the right order and check that out it's going to cut those through but if they're not exactly where I want it I could still move them around or even rotate it and again that's another one of these in a basic modeling tools that you kind of always come back to so I have one pedal I'll just call this at least pedal and then I'm just going to build out kind of quickly with some basic shapes from over here of this tube. And I'm just going to copy that and make just a little one. We'll just do this out of some basic objects for that connector part, as we'll call it for this. So we got our little connector part, which is, of course, the engineering term for it move that into a space into that spot let's go to my side view and i'm gonna copy paste that move it up go back to our main view and i'll set all this and connect all these and line them up here in a second so we got all this stuff this is all of our we've got our pedal and our two tubes Just move those where we want. We got this tube and this tube. Those are going to connect somehow into this tube that's our gear shape. And we'll just say that they go right there. And we'll assume that all this stuff can cut through and fix that later. Or assume that the engineer is going to fix it for us. So let's get this one moved back over. 
And then I'm just going to make a basic shape again with a loft nerve and end sides to make that connection part. So I'll just rotate this 90 degrees, scale it down, move it over to near our pedal. Good, that will work for that extra connection part. And I'm going to hop in our top view and just scale this one axis by getting coordinates and scaling this down only on the X because I want actually that kind of compressed shape. So now that I have one of those, again, I'll just drop that into a loft, go back to this view so we can see what's going on. Duplicate that, move it up, maybe scale it a bit. Duplicate that bottom one, scale it up, and look at that. All this stuff actually, we're, oh, got a little broken part here, so how do we fix that? We just make our tube bigger. Perfect. Now no one would fall off of this bike. And on my loft, I'm going to just add fillet caps to smooth that out a bit. And I'll scale down this bottom one just a touch. And now we have one fully working pedal. Look at that. So what I want to do is make a null so I can make a copy of it. Just drop all of that here. And then I'm going to center this, but I'm going to move it up here. So when we make a copy or if we were animating this, we could actually have this whole pedal just rotate around. So I could do symmetry, but I actually want to do instance because I want to be able to control them separately. So I'm going and not have them rotate on the same axis. So I'm going to, again, just make an instance, rotate that around 180 move it over to here, and then just rotate that 180. Slide that down a bit. And we can see that these parts aren't fully enclosed. So again, we're just making a rough model. So we're going to do our all of our favorite new trick of when you don't want someone to notice something, just cover it up with a big tube. Again, this is probably how all engineering works as far as I know, and I'm probably going to get a bunch of angry letters from actual engineers, but hopefully they learned a lot too, and they're less mad about this non-working bike that would fall over. So let's just get that centered in here, and then we'll line up our pedals from there. So we got our main pedal, pull that down. Look, it all, it all works. So the last major component I'm going to do is just draw out a chain and that'll get us far enough as far as I want to go with this tutorial. So I'm going to go to my bottom left view and change this to left and just using my spline I'm just going to zoom in here and just draw out the rough shape of that. So just click 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 draw this around. We'll use this to attach some objects too so just wrap it loosely around, we'll get it close enough um, to where it looks like it could be hanging there. And I'm going to go into this mode, get this view, go back to object mode, and we're just going to kind of move this over. And I'm going to move the axis back here and just kind of hook that into where those would be. Now we could get super detailed and make a bunch of chain links, but like I said, I want to keep this simple. Maybe, you know, try to knock this out in like 20 to 40 minutes like we planned and, you know, get this thing done. So like I said, you know, I'm, I'm married and I want to go pick my wife up from work soon because it's cold. And if I tell her that, you know, I'm, I'm going to be late because I'm still making her, her bike for the internet, you know, I, I don't think that'd be very nice. So I'm just going to cheat this a little again um, and si just keep this in simplified terms and grab this H profile and drop that into a sweep and scale this down and 
look at that. That at least gets us the idea of what a chain would be. This kind of roughs out all the shapes. We could add from here a lot more detail using a lot of these same techniques. And you know, you can start to make adjustments as you kind of spin around and look at things and you can keep adding detail, you know, depending on what you're doing, let's say that this was gonna be really far away. You know, you could simplify the geometry and this would be sufficient. If you wanted to be super close up, this is when you could use a lot of those techniques that we talked about to add more detail. You know, if we wanted to add some little caps and rivets and things like the these little end parts here, we could grab this cloner, duplicate that. You could use a lot of these techniques to just keep going and go as far as you want. But this is covering a lot of what I wanted to go over to kind of quickly block out these shapes and take advantage of a lot of the stuff you could do with, you know, symmetry objects and these basic shapes to get where you're going. Hopefully you learned a lot. We'll wrap this up and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.